Hi, Jennifer. Well, hey, good to see you. It's just about time for you to be here. Let's get started. Yeah, I'm excited. Scott, that's for you. Make sure that folks see it, okay? Thank you. I can do that. So, um, as we talked before, I'm Jennifer Shook. I'm the development director here, and I think that we're just going to do a little bit of tour of LTHC Homeless Services in our Day Resource Center. Yeah, sounds That's great. Okay, so you came in the main doors, obviously, um, and this whole space here is our Day Resource Center, so I'll take you around some of um, the spaces that we have and just kind of talk with you about what we do. Uh, for the folks that come in here, they are actively homeless, so they're experiencing a homeless crisis right now, and we just want to be able to provide resources to them to help get them back on their feet. So lots of basic needs are met here. We have lockers and storage space. When you're homeless, your stuff is very important, so we want to make sure that people, um, whenever possible, have a space to do that. Uh, same thing goes for showers, laundry, um, we have regular bathrooms and shower bathrooms here, as well as laundry facilities. And our guests are just able to um, utilize those during our open hours. They get the stuff from guest services that they need, towels, blankets, underpants, those kinds of things. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it makes for a very busy day for our guest services. Yeah, I bet. So this is our donation room. Um, it's one of two spaces that I'm gonna show you for stuff. And as you can see, we get a lot of stuff donated, um, and its first stop is always here. We take two kinds of things in, in terms of donation. Um, one is for our guest services here to use, so lots of travel size toiletries, um, shoes, coats, hats, blankets, this time of year, scarves and mittens, we're transitioning over. Um, and then we also take, because we are helping to end someone's homelessness, we are also interested in taking items that they need for their new place. So we take household items, um, some furniture, lots of linens and pillows and blankets and that sort of thing. So we always have volunteers. This is like a normal volunteer opportunity for folks to come in and uh, help sort through things and then get it to the places that we need it to. Sounds great. Yeah, we're just going to cut right back here through guest services. So we always have staff working at guest services to be able to serve our guests. We do, I want to point this out, um, call our folks guests. It's very important for us to think about them being here to receive a service and we're the ones providing that services. So you can see up here, we keep all of these kinds of things on hand, towels, laundry detergent, um, when anybody needs anything, uh, we're able to just hand those things out. Um, we also have socks and underwear and that sort of thing. I don't know if I mentioned, but we provide telephones, um, computers, as well as um, mailing uh, services here. So our guests can have their permanent mailing address um, transferred to here while they're um, receiving our services. So we're That's just going to so nice. cut through this other door. <clears throat> so I mentioned more storage. We have a small storage area here. Um, computers that our guests can use. And then this open space here is the Day Resource Center. So um, you'll see folks, we have a few folks here this evening, um, but folks can come in out of the weather here. They're here for appointments either with our staff or one of the agencies that visits. Um, here we have folks that come in and provide services to our guests. Uh, they could be working with our employment specialists. They could just be here for lunch or you know, whatever the case may be. So um, as soon as they check in once and they have their initial appointment, if they're enrolled in our program, they're welcome to come and go as they please. Great. Let me show you the kitchen. How many guests do you say you feed per week? Uh, per week, that's a hard number, but we do um, Monday through Friday, we do breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast is more like a set out and you can just have what, you know, sometimes we have bagels or, you know, donuts or cereal. Lunch and dinner, we serve um, hot meals, and then on the weekends, it's brunch and dinner. So we try to get a lot of churches and businesses, organizations, families to either donate the food, serve the food, or the best case scenario, donate and serve the food. And right now, we're serving about 70 people per meal. Oh, so, wow. Um, yeah, it's a big number. Last year, almost 40,000 meals, wow. so, which is even more impressive when you see how small our kitchen <laughs> is. <laughs> It's like a big square, so come on in here. We have refrigerator space, freezers obviously, storage space for dry goods, 
Um, but everything else is basically like a home kitchen. Uh, so we just have regular stoves and microwaves and um, nothing too elaborate. I know we're going to talk in a few minutes about our new facility, the Engagement Center, and one of the best things about that is we're going to grow to a commercial sized kitchen to really be able to accommodate the number of people that we serve each day. That'll be so great. Yes, super excited. So it's just a big, everything around here is a big square. We come right around the, come right back around. So um, at mealtime, guests line up and go through and they can, usually we have two options that people can choose from and they just get them whatever they want. Um, and seconds almost always we have available. So. Do the guests have a favorite meal? I don't, you know what, I'd have to ask around. Um, but Ivan, who is our kitchen manager, he's a former restaurant owner and quite a chef. So he <laughs> can make, um, some pretty amazing things. Last year for Christmas, we had pecan crusted chicken and oh, wow. coin and asparagus and bacon and yeah, pretty amazing. Sounds great. So where are we off to now? Um, we're gonna cut back through day services to head into the employment center. So this is our employment center. Um, this is a relatively new program for us. We, in fact, just celebrated our first year anniversary. Um, if you just want to pull that shot behind you. <clears throat> so our employment specialist, her name is Danielle, and what she does is act as a job coach. So for our guests who are able and interested in getting employment, she does an assessment with them, what are their interests, what's their work history, and then works then with local employers to get them connected. She has um, helped well over 250 people get employment since she started, uh, which is amazing and really breaks that stereotype that, oh, people who are homeless don't want to work. Yeah, they do. Yeah. They, they do. They just need a little bit of extra help. So some of the extra help that we're able to provide are clothes for interviews or for the job itself. I had no idea before this year how many different kinds of shoes there were in the world as it relates to employment. So um, we do take shoes and um, all kinds of shoe donations. We really have to limit our clothing donation um, just because we don't have space for it. So we just keep a few items here on hand for folks when they're getting interviews or jobs. The other thing that we didn't prepare for is um, meals because when someone's experiencing homelessness and they're coming in for uh, with us, they're having their meals here. But when um, they're at a job site, then um, they're not able to do that and they don't have money to go to McDonald's with the rest of the crew or whatever. So we actually started a little in-house um, food pantry that um, our employee guests are able to select items from. So when they're at the work site, then they can eat. And that's, you know, important if they're going to want to keep their jobs. Yeah, that's super beneficial. Yeah. This is a great resource. Yeah, it really is. And over 75% of the folks that we see um, who are who are getting into employment through Danielle and our employment services are keeping that employment, which means that they're ending their homelessness all that quicker, all that much quicker because they have a steady source of income that they can then use to get into housing. So yeah. it really, it makes a difference for them. Okay, so next we're gonna walk through our case manager hallway. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, case managers who work with our guests to, uh, to develop an individualized housing plan. And that's what the guest is working on to um, end their homelessness. We have found that there's really two kinds of categories for people that get, that are experiencing homelessness. One, either it's situational, they had one or two or three bad things happen, lost a job or relationship broke up, those kinds of things, and then they end up homeless. So they're really just in a bad situation and they need sort of a boost. Um, and certainly we're able to do that and work with them. Um, the other kind of person is, is not so much situationally homeless as they are chronically homeless. So there are folks that have a lot of different kinds of barriers, physical health, mental health, addictions, eviction history, criminal history, all of those kinds of things. Um, and so the staff are working through each one of those. It doesn't matter why the person is homeless, our goal is to end that for them. So we, tr we, we try to identify the appropriate housing solution for each person or family and then make that solution happen. So 
We have um, one and a half case managers that work specifically with veterans. Um, they have the ability to do a little bit of prevention, but otherwise all of our guests are literally or imminently homeless. We have one person that specializes in working with families, and then the other case managers can are jacks of all trade. They can do a little bit of everything. So we'll just head down this hallway. How many people do the case managers help per day? How many? Well, guests? it's really uh, that's a good question. So, for instance, uh, Beth, who is uh, the case manager that does all of our intakes. Hi, Beth. Hi. So um, she meets with people at their, when they're first here um, and are, are you know newly entering this crisis situation and any time possible that she can divert them out of homelessness, that's what we want to do. Um, and so when that's not possible, of course, then they're going to be enrolled in our day services program and start working on that housing plan I was just telling you about. Um, but unfortunately, lately... Beth has been a very, very busy girl. Um, she's averaging probably 10 new intakes a day. Oh, wow. Um, one day, 20. 22. She had 20 in one day. That's a lot. Um, it is a lot. And the, what the, the trend that we're seeing there is that's the, the situationally homeless people. Um, hours are getting cut at jobs. Housing prices are going up. Relationships are breaking up. So we're just seeing a lot of people that are having a crisis. They need to get in. They need to get some connections and some referrals. And then hopefully Beth will get them on their way. And then we're never going to see them again. Yeah. So that's always our goal. So you having a good day? I am. Good. So good. what are our plans for Giving Tuesday? Oh, well, I think this year we're really going to focus on the Engagement Center. Okay. Uh, because there's walls up now. You can tell that it's a building. Uh, so we're ready to really start talking about that. So right. it's going to be a good one. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Have a good night. Thank See ya. You too. So remember, before I mentioned everything around here is a square. You can see that's the case because we're back at the beginning and there's the mop bucket. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking yeah. the time to talk yeah. with us. We know you're a really busy person, so Happy we'll let to you do get it. back to business. Happy to do it. Thanks so much.